when we think about the word violence, we might think about guns, gangs, wars, the most extreme kinds of violence. You know, the news headlines, the things that catch our attention, the shock value, the interesting stories. While these sorts of acts of violence are important and are worth our attention, what about the violence that doesn't get in the headlines? What about the violence that we don't hear about? If this is the only way that we talk about violence in the framework of its most extreme forms, what we see in the news and media, then we close our eyes and ignore the other pervasive forms of violence that happen every day and that might be hidden. Today, I'd like to talk to you about one of those forms and that is relationship violence. Now, typically when we think about the word violence, we don't think relationship violence. And even when we do, we might think of it in its extremes. We think of celebrities, think of physical assaults, catastrophic events, viral videos, and death. So just like we talk about violence and its catastrophic events as something distant from us, you know, wars, those wars abroad, the mass shooting in that town, the gang violence in those neighborhoods, we tend to think about relationship violence in those same distant but extreme terms that happen to those celebrities, those people, in this way. If we continue to talk about violence in only this one framework, we close our eyes and we end up ignoring the people who are involved in the more everyday, <laughs> comparatively mundane acts of violence that happen frequently and it does happen. It does happen frequently in our country. You know, you've probably heard the stat, one in four. One in four women in the United States will be affected by relationship violence. And yes, men are affected as well, but according to the statistics, 95% of women are the victims. So if these shock value stories about relationship violence aren't the full picture, then what is? By expanding our previously held beliefs and ideas about relationship violence, we're able to recognize the less the hidden and the less recognizable symptoms of relationship violence that happens within our own communities every day. So, I'm here to tell you about ways to recognize and prevent relationship violence as it happens in our communities, in our neighborhoods, maybe in our own lives. And I'm going to help you do this in three steps. So we're going to think, speak, and act. So think. Do you like that animation? It took a long time to put that in there. Think. So thinking differently about relationship violence. So like I said before, we need to think beyond the celebrities, beyond the catastrophic events. In addition, we need to think beyond physical violence. A lot of the time when we think of an abusive relationship, we think physical violence. But in fact, um, in abusive relationships, physical violence doesn't have to be present to be abusive. And in fact, even in ones where there is physical violence, um, it doesn't always come up, it doesn't always show up and start off that way. So think about it, let me give you an example. So you and I are going on our very first date you and me. And we're having a nice time, we're having dinner, and I walk up to you and punch you in the face. Would you want to continue your relationship with me? No. The answer is no. And this is a very oversimplified, oversimplified example, but it does kind of underline the fact that physical violence often doesn't show up early in the relationship, and in fact, once that happens, other forms of violence have already occurred. So I keep talking about these other forms of hidden, invisible violence, but what do I really mean by that? Well, here we have the power and control wheel. This is um, a tool that has been used to understand different types of violence all around. It's based on the Duluth model. And here it shows the types of violence that can occur in a relationship, including physical, but also the things that I've been talking about that are, that are invisible, that are hidden. So let's go over some of these. This can include emotional abuse. 
So what does that mean? That can look like intense jealousy, intimidation, blaming, guilt, isolation from your friends and family. And another one, economic abuse. This is something that might not get a lot of attention, but is actually really important to talk about. Economic abuse can look like this. I will force you to have only one bank account shared with me. I control all of your funds, you can't spend any of your money, and you cannot get a job, so you're completely dependent on me. Think about your friend who has to text her boyfriend where she's at and what she's doing every hour, on the hour, or else. Think about your coworker who never joins you all for happy hour because she knows the answer is no. Think about your cousin who doesn't show up to family gatherings anymore and doesn't really have that smile that she used to have. Or your friend who loses his temper a lot and curses out his girlfriend because she just never understands. All of these scenarios can be forms and red flags for relationship violence. If we don't recognize these signs that are encompassed here and beyond, we don't open up the ways for conversations to happen so that we can intervene or that we, we could even know before the last minute or before it's too late. So this is all well and good, but how do we speak up about relationship violence? Well, before we delve into this question, I think it's important to first address the why. So why is it even difficult? Why is it so difficult to have these kinds of conversations? Well, quite simply, it's uncomfortable. We're very uncomfortable. The idea that violence can be something close to us, that affects us, and can even be committed by us, is uncomfortable. An important point is that violence is not committed by a type of person. We distance ourselves often in these dialogues about relationship violence by focusing on celebrities or in, um, in high profile cases. And we distance ourselves from the victims often by blaming them because it's uncomfortable to think that we could ever be associated with either as a victim, a potential victim of relationship violence or an abuser. Regardless of the media attention that the celebrities over there are getting, we need to recognize again that violence is more than physical violence. It's not committed by one type of person and it affects our communities right here. By doing this, we're able to think of violence as it is real and something that's not so distant from us. It's not just a headline that we see in the news, not just something interesting and glamorized that you get to talk about with your friends and move on from. Now, of course, this is where things, again, feel uncomfortable. The idea that your closest friend, your coworker, even a family member could be a perpetrator or a victim of violence literally brings the idea home. That discomfort is where the conversation starts and where it needs to start. Now that you have thought about relationship violence in a different way, as something that can be close, as something that does and can affect us in either direction, you can feel a little bit more empowered now that you know to speak and act to prevent relationship violence. So how do we do this? Again, what can I do? What can we do? So again, we can do this together by shifting our conversations about relationship violence. Again, so not talking about it in the way that the media does. Don't let yourself talk about um, relationship violence only as these extreme hyperbolic examples as the norm. Don't let yourself talk about it in the media in the way that the media does with these held assumptions about 
well, why did they stay then? Why don't you just leave? What did she do to provoke him? Moreover, reach out to people before it's too late, when you see the red signs, which we saw in the power control wheel. Don't wait until you see a physical mark of violence or abuse. Don't wait until a black eye to start a conversation. It can be as simple as reaching out and saying, hey, is everything okay? Are you okay? How are you doing? Or, hey, remember what happened? That time, that seemed a little weird to me. Further, if you think you might be in an uncomfortable or abusive relationship, know that there are resources on and off campus here that you can turn to. Now, before I go on, I want to acknowledge that yes, I know it can be really uncomfortable and a little bit scary to engage in these kind of dialogues. It's in no way easy. Even after studying the topic of violence for the past three years and getting exposure to a bunch of different fields related to it, I still have a hard time sometimes talking about violence. But what I've learned and what we can learn collectively is that we can't shut down or not have these kind of conversations because they're hard, because we're uncomfortable, because otherwise we don't grow. And we don't also change the norms that are in place that keep that discomfort there. So we have these tools one more time. You're thinking differently. You're speaking up or to someone. And last step, that's up to you, is to act. So this is where I leave it up to you to get involved, to find out more to become aware, you know, this can be happening right now in your daily lives as you sit here. This doesn't mean you have to go out and pursue something different. It just means thinking and acting and speaking in a different way. And through this, your influence can influence your own social circle. Don't let yourself, don't let yourself turn a blind eye to relationship violence in whatever form that you see it. And if talking to someone in your own social circle it doesn't help you, please know that there are other outside resources that are available to you. So this slide has some campus resources and organizations that are involved with this work every day, as well as my contact information if that serves you. Again, so remember, you can think differently about relationship violence, you can speak differently about relationship violence, and you can act to prevent it. Thank you.